If you head to all the discotheques, skate parks, or amusement arcades, all the kids are saying one thing. Get rid of DRS. And I get it. I've heard all the arguments. It's artificial. It's not real racing. It discourages actual overtaking because it makes it tactically smarter to wait for the DRS zone rather than make a riskier move anywhere else. These are all perfectly valid points, to be honest. Ideally, we'd want F1 to be in a position where cars of similar calibre can overtake naturally, without assistance, where they can get nose to tail through the corners, fight side by side, pass, repass and defend, fair and square for lap after lap. That's the dream anyway. But I'm going to argue that DRS is the best we have. For now. The difficulty is, we have a bit of a dirty air problem and we're still waiting to resolve that. And if we just remove DRS now with no plan to resolve the issues with dirty air, then we will likely be left with almost no racing at all. Let's go back a quick step and remind ourselves of what DRS actually sets out to do. While DRS is only activated on the straights, it's really the corners that are the problem here. See, the aerodynamic components of F1 cars prefer nice, smooth air to maximise the downforce and aero balance they were designed to generate. Downforce and aero balance are key to cars being able to maximise their speed through the fast corners. If an F1 car is travelling through the kind of disturbed, dirty air we see coming off the back of other F1 cars, then the downforce off the wings and bodywork is reduced and unpredictable. Most of the airflow down the car is controlled by the front wing and bargeboard elements. If these parts don't have clean air to work with, then the airflow down the whole of the car is affected. This means that a car in dirty air cannot travel as quickly through the corners as it is ideally capable of, instead suffering from understeer, oversteer or a general lack of aerodynamic grip. In a racing situation, what this means is, if we imagine two cars nose to tail, when they pass through a corner, the leading car, in clean air, has decent downforce and can attack the corner with maximum capability. The following car, in dirty air, will suffer through the corner and lose time to the car ahead. This following car will tend to lose so much time and exit speed in struggling through the corners that by the time it gets to a straight, normally the best chance to take advantage of a slipstream and overtake, then it's already too slow and too far behind to get close enough to make a move. The time loss and exit speed loss is a real double whammy, and that's before we even consider the dirty air effect on engine and tyre cooling. So DRS exists to undo that disadvantage caused by dirty air, giving the chasing car the ability to claw back the time it lost through the preceding corners. It's not technically supposed to be this mega advantage to the car behind or even a push to pass system. Rather, it was supposed to be a way to readdress the balance. Now granted, this isn't always the way it's worked out. Calibrating DRS zones is something of a fine art, but that's a different, more subtle argument. Nonetheless, the principle behind DRS has been to give the chasing car a fighting chance. This year, the car's front wings and forward aerodynamic components have been restricted to calm a lot of the dirty air generated by the extreme vortices coming off the increasingly complex aero parts of latter years. DRS has also been given a big boost by increasing the size of the rear wing and increasing the gap opened by the DRS. This means the drag difference between an open and a closed wing is much, much bigger than in previous years. Having a much bigger DRS effect should mean we can significantly shorten the DRS zones. Maybe we can even move them away from the braking zone, as I'll touch on at the end of this video. We'll see if any of this is explored as the FIA continue to play with DRS zones through 2019. So back to my initial premise. I reckon DRS is still the best solution we have until we sort out this dirty air problem. And solving the issue of dirty air is not a simple one. F1 is not a spec series. This means team can, within the parameters of the rules and regulations, develop their cars as much as they want to exploit the limits of known engineering. Unfortunately, F1 engineers have figured out the best way to control airflow around their cars is to generate these huge, disturbing vortices right down the car that end up absolutely wrecking all of the air behind the car. This is the majority of the dirty air that everyone's talking about. So until some new rules are made that control this area of development, uh, an extreme version might be to hand out standardised front wings and ban barge boards, a clever version might be a stronger variation of the 2019 rules that strictly control the allowed shapes of the wing elements. Now until these rules are put into place, we have a problem, and that problem is currently best mitigated by something like DRS that gives a chasing car a little boost to undo all the time they lost through no fault of their own. 
Now I'd briefly like to address a couple of popular suggestions I hear from fans a lot, you know, other than to throw DRS in the bin completely, which I think I've already covered. One fairly common idea I hear is to keep DRS, but allow all the drivers to use it at any time. That way the chasing car doesn't get an artificial advantage that seems ridiculous and unfair. Now, ignoring some of the safety issues with that, you know, there are some corners that could benefit from DRS being permanently deactivated through, like Monaco's Tunnel and Suzuka's 130R come to mind. This idea, though fun in theory, very much defeats the purpose of DRS. DRS's only function is to specifically add a temporary advantage to the chasing car, in order to undo the advantage gained by the leading car. If both cars could use DRS, then we're back to square one and the chasing car can't gain back any ground. This is no different really than getting rid of DRS altogether, other than adding an extra component to navigating a track as fast as possible. It actually sounds quite fun really, but would only really work once we solve the dirty air problem. Movable aerodynamics could be a fun addition to racing. Another idea I've seen knocking about is allowing all cars to use DRS at any point, but only allowing the DRS to be open for a limited amount of time per lap. So like 10 to 20 seconds or something every lap. This also sounds good in theory. There's an idea here about having to be tactical about how you use your advantage. It's pretty similar to the first generation of Kurs, where the electric motor could be used at any point to give yourself a power boost, but the energy deployed was limited per lap. In reality though, it wouldn't be much different to the unrestricted DRS at any time idea, as you'd really only use DRS on the straights, so drivers would be deploying DRS at similar times anyway, especially once optimum strategies have been calculated. This results in another stalemate. Personally, in the meantime, I'm all for shortening the DRS zones now that DRS is more potent and, where possible, moving DRS zones away from the braking zone. Place them instead towards the start of the long straights and have an automatic deactivation point part way down the straight. This way the chasing car can redress some of the balance early on in the straight and then the DRS deactivates and the two cars can run on equal footing, fair and square, down to the next corner. Hopefully the actual overtaking part will feel much more like a real overtake as the chasing car can't carry its overspeed all the way into the braking zone. Now I'm all for getting rid of DRS, I really am, but only when the time is right. Here's hoping Ross Braun and his team nail those 2021 regulations and we can finally get rid of it without getting rid of close racing altogether.